Dynamites. Look, it's episode 70. Oh, what's wrong with my lighter? Fire. Fire. God, there's just a little bit of panic in me because those other ones aren't bendable. Um, episode 72. Coming at you. Right now, I smell like a hole in the ground because I picked up one of the cats that was in a hole. Can you explain these cats? I can't explain these cats. They people want to know explain those cats. I I'm pretending I don't have cats. <laughs> so, uh, uh, some cat had four cats and kittens. kittens underneath the air conditioner outside, and I tried to give them away and I tried when, to when find did, them a home. When did that happen? Uh, during COVID. They're COVID cats. And then they tunneled underneath the house and um, set up their own organization underneath the house, which is why I've named them after uh, Mexican drug lords who also have wonderful tunnels and have set up operations. <laughs> in the, yes, uh, it's Mencho, Chapo, Cato, and Blanco. That's their names. Chapo, El Chapo. Mencho right. is the new El Chapo. Cato would be my drug lord name. And then Blanco, because that one's mostly white. So um, there's a lot of land around here, and they can be outdoor uh, a lot. They can be outdoors a lot, and they seem to like it out there, and I feed them, and I made them a house and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, here we are. That was March, I think I found them. March. March. And then I tried. You know, I've called everywhere you could. Now I won't. Now I won't give them away, though. Now, now I'm attached. <laughs> Especially my Joe. Oh, Mencho. oh. Mencho's my favorite. Chapo's wonderful, but he's a boy and he's a lot bigger and he's kind of rowdy. Uh, Kato has never been touched by a human, nor will ever be, I don't think. She doesn't want to. She's very mean. You just walk by her. And the other three are so nice. I'm like, why are you such an asshole? You, they're being fed. They're being, they've been spayed and neutered. I've paid for all that. Even the vet was like, that one's real mean. And I go, I told you, I told you that one is real mean is right. And, but, you know, they, they hang out by the pool and they they go on the porch and I'm getting a cat door oh my God. for the porch. Cat lady. I love cats. I love dogs more, but I love cats. I do love dog. I love, uh, well, be anything in the hound group. The beagles are my favorite. They're not well behaved. They're, uh-huh. And even my brother had a long haired dachshund. Dog was fucking hilarious. Lukey, we used to call him worst bad dog ever. Like he was, he could be so good, but he could be so bad. Um, yeah, almost too smart in a hound way. Mm-hmm. No, I do. I can't have a dog. I'm gone too much. The cats, I can leave for even a week and have a, one of the kids stop by and make sure they got food and they don't care. But a dog would, yeah. I'm going to get a dog when I retire. Probably just a mutt. The problem is if I go up to the thing, I'll never get that beagle that I've always wanted because I had one when I was super little. But um, there's so many cute ones at the pound. It's probably better to rescue <laughs> one and get some inbred. Mm-hmm. Maybe there'll be a rescue beagle. Or maybe, oh, there is an actual rescue beagle place. I think I saw it out in California. It's on Twitter somewhere. Anyway, termite. New Year's was always, always completely uneventful and fine. Um, I, you know, I worked in restaurants and bars so long. I always worked. And then I went, then I had a real job for one year. So well, that didn't count. And then comedy and then Y2K kind of screwed up comedy clubs for a while because everybody thought the world was going to end. I don't know. People seem to want to go party. They don't want to go to a show. So most of us that do theater gigs don't even do shows on New Year's Eve. And like casino gig maybe would be fun. But like a a theater thing, it's just, I don't know. It's not really what people seem to want to do. So I now stay home like a proper old person. What would you do? I flipped through all the channels and watched the nonsense from um, Nashville to their celebration to... um, (laughs) New York's, um, but I can't, uh, the Anderson Cooper, Andy Cohen thing, I can't take a lot of that. So, yeah, a lot of flipping around. Um, and that's um, that's about it. It's, not, it's, it's terribly boring, but not in a bad way. Boring in a great way. I'm totally, yeah, and there's, there's Omicron, Omicron, whatever you want to call it. There's just COVID flying around everywhere, and I've tried not to get it. 
and I haven't, and I'd like to keep it that way so I don't see any reason to go out with in in, in the areas where, where could you use COVID? nobody gives a shit. It's like one of my brothers said, um, yeah, they, it's just over here. Like, it's just <laughs> done. People don't give a shit anymore. They're not getting wow. tested. So they don't right. care. And I get that part of it, too. Everybody's tired of it. I get it. Um, and maybe this one, you know, this one doesn't seem to be, as, if you're vaccinated, it doesn't seem to be as bad at all. But whatever. I don't want to get sick, period. And my parents are call, down in Florida going, me, man, let's COVID test. And I'm like, my dad goes, I don't even want to know. I mean, he goes, we're not doing anything anyway. Okay. I'm like, well, I'm point taken. But I did. I FedExed them. Um, all shows so far are a go. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's getting strange again. But I don't think it's going to last this time. I think it's going to be like a peak at the end of January and maybe through February, middle of February. Because like Lewis says, New York's already kind of peaking. Yeah, this is, these are serious topics, so yeah. let's move on, move on, paddles. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2022. Yeah. I like even, I always said I, I like even numbers better. I don't know why. But 2020 wasn't good. No. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. 21, 2021 was better than 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so one of the termites sent me this coolest thing, and I forgot, well, I forgot to mention it because I left it on the Grand Termites bus. It's a cigar amplifier. Cool. Yeah. And I am, and that's a shout out to Joan and Greg. And then they uh, emailed to see if I got, and I did get it. And then I didn't show it because I took it on the Grand Termites bus to show the Grand Termite <laughs> when he cruised through. <laughs> well, I don't even think he took it because he doesn't even know how to play the guitar, but he left with it. And now I'll just have to wait till the Grand Termite returns. They made it? Yeah, they made it. Oh, it was wow. very funky. It was very cool. That's why I took it out to the bus to show him. Yeah, he's interested in crazy things like that. What else, termites? Well, first of all, what am I drinking? Um, how about this? Piney River Brewing Company, a little Missouri Mule IPA. And here's what's crazy. I'm going to have to Google this. Uh, I don't know where B-U-C-Y-R-U-S Missouri is. See if you can find out on that. But it's either Boo Cyrus or Bookers. Piney River Brewing Company. Where the fuck is Texas County in Missouri? It's on, it's on Route 17. Route 17. Nothing. Where is this? I don't know. You're from there. I am. I am from here. Indian Pale Ale. Well, it's great. Do you know where Houston is? No. Houston, Texas? Nope. Oh. No. I'm, I'll be in Houston. A little shout out for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and San Antonio. Do you know where Eminence is? Eminence? Yeah, that's where Matt goes hunting. Yeah, it's kind of around there. Oh, it's down there? Well, good for them. Yeah, off of 63. Off of 63? Yes, yeah. I know 63. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to go well, visit the Mark, these people. The Mark Twain forest. It's a taste of the Mark Twain is forest. That for real? Yes, the Mark Twain <laughs> forest. Why is that so funny? He's from Missouri. Robin Hood lives there. <laughs> Robin Hood does not live there. Mark Twain was a real person All named right. Samuel Clemens. Um, this actually says taste of the Ozarks on it. I'm going to have to go visit these people. Missouri Mule. IPA. I like the can, too. Of course you do. I do. That's your thing. It's how I pick. Yeah. Piney Brewing Ingredients. Ozark Well Water, Malted Barley, Yeast, Hops, Independent Craft. All right. So that's what we're drinking. What are we... We have some termite items besides the... Um, This lady, I thought this was very funny. <laughs> it says Anne's Lucky Ball. She sent me... But wow. listen to this. That's yeah. Great. She's played over 90 straight holes without losing it. So I think she should keep it. But she said it's time for another one. So now I'm going to, and it's a good ball. It's a title list. Why don't you send me my good ball? Your, your best ball. My lucky ball? God, it's been so long since I played golf because the weather's so shit. I'll have to go search for one. Maybe I'll send Anne a ball back and then she'll see how long she can keep it. And then Anne also sent bourbon balls that are made in Kentucky. Oh, that is I don't know. I want to taste them. She said they're good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And they're very rich. Right. You, oh, by the way, who had on the Weather Channel to watch Kentucky lose their shit? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the storm. The storm. Yeah. Tennessee, bad enough. Southern Missouri, bad with snow. Mm -hmm. But Kentucky, 
Well, no, that one storm in Atlanta where they all just abandoned their vehicles. I'm like, <laughs> it's just been shitty lately. And the Virginia thing, no, everybody in charge should be fired. The, um, the governor, all those people that had sit on that highway, the whole other side of the highway was open. I do not understand why we didn't call the National Guard and at the bare minimum bring the people food. People had babies out there. They were there for like 24 fucking hours and we're just watching it on TV like there's absolutely nothing. You could drone them shit. You could send, uh, I just, I thought that was just ridiculous that nobody, even Tim Kaine, the guy that ran with Hillary, he was out there going, um, yeah, I'm here. Like he actually knows people in government that you could go, hey. Bring me some Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's it. See all the restaurants that missed their opportunities. Mm-hmm. Maybe they weren't letting them people on that side of the highway, but I think the government could have gotten on that side of the highway or fly with helicopters and drop food, food drops. All kinds of things they could have done. I don't get it. I just do not understand that at all. Moving on. Okay. This term, right? Um, this made me laugh. Gina, thanks for keeping me on company. And I've literally helped somebody survive grad school. I'm just amazed anybody can go to grad school. I could barely made it through college. <laughs> and I was like, this has got to end. And it ended nope. when I graduated from college. But to do more, no. She sent this very funny shirt, which is, um, oh, that's so awesome. yeah, it's Bigfoot riding, riding a lot. <laughs> <It's monster. laughs> like, Yay. Yeah, it's big, but I'm going to make it a sleep oh, shirt. It's going to be a wonderful sleep shirt. Oh, awesome. And all my nieces and nephews will be. And she sent me a grow your own Bigfoot. Um, yeah, it comes in. A, he starts in a log. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I haven't read the instructions yet, but I'm going to do it. We'll leave it here so everybody can watch. <laughs> That's a fun one. Thank you, Gina. And then this was sent, too, from Cheryl. How adorable is this? It's a keychain. It's got a little baby shoe in them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right, termites. That's a little official termite business. The desk, because the tree is gone, I know, it's looking better. I'm just going to set that there. Don't lose those bourbon I'm not going to lose those bourbon balls. It's too bad. My parents ran away from all of us and went to Florida. My mother would love them. Um, oh, what are we t- tasting here? Right. Okay. I don't know. I've already opened the bag. Wisp. You know I love wisp. I love Parmesan wisp. This is, it says tangy ranch, cheese crisp, and nuts. I don't like the way the bag smells. They're trying to make it healthy. I know. No. No? Wisp, do what you do. No. No. It's terrible. And they make other good stuff, but that's terrible. Oh, my God, terrible. God damn. They are healthy. They don't have any carbs. Net carbs, three carbs. No sugar. It's probably just chemicals. Who knows what we're all putting. So then I wanted to try this. I've never tried this. Kraft sandwich spread. It just says sandwich spread, which leads me to believe it's going to taste like Miracle Whip. I still can't get over the Duke's mayonnaise. I cannot get over it. It's so good. I just feel like I got ripped off my whole life out of Duke's. Oh, no. This guy like pickles and shit. I relish in it. Why would you do that? Because you're too lazy to cut up relish or pickles? No. It's secret sauce. Oh. Oh. Boo. I don't like it. That was terrible, too. God dang. The only thing that was good today is the bourbon ball. Didn't I have something else? No, I got nothing else. I got to eat this cracker. I'm sorry. That was horrible. Oh, my God. All right. So... What? Duke's number one. Duke's is amazing. But here's what I did. I made my rye dip Uh for Christmas and New Year's Eve, and I used half Duke's, half Miracle Whip. And with deviled eggs, you need a little Miracle Whip for the tanginess, too. So half and half, boom, you have the perfect rye dip, and you have a perfect deviled egg. Hellman's is good mayonnaise, but Duke's is, I think it's better. And Miracle Whip's just different. Can't compare Mm. So oh, Super Bowl party. I'll do some. Yeah, God damn it. I should have filmed my ride dip. I'll do it again. Yeah, I'll eat it on the Super Bowl. Yeah. If I'm home. I think I'll be home. I don't know. 
usually don't work, try to work <coughs> that Sunday. Because um, you have gambling. I have a gambling problem. <laughs> I know, I don't tell the agents that. I'm sorry. Here's the weekends I won't be available. <laughs> I, don't, I don't say why. I'll be in Vegas. Wait, I'm sorry. Are there playoff games in the evening? <laughs> you want me to be on stage while the wild cards are going on? No! All right. Update! You know what you're all waiting for. No. Oh, yeah. But I'm not doing that first. Okay, good. This one made me laugh. Our shaman... I should be drinking out of his glass instead I'm drinking out of the White Castle glass. The QAnon shaman insists he tried to calm the crowd oh, come on. at the January 6th riot. <laughs> Despite storming the Capitol bare-chested and carrying a six-foot spear, he's the guy with the horns. He blames the media for making him the face of the mob in the jailhouse interview after he was sentenced to 40 months. Guess what? Whoever, who you wore horns, you had fur, you have tattoos, whoever is the wackiest looking dude, you're going to be the face of it because that's the most interesting. And you're the most, you're the least forgettable. Maybe you forgot that when you were putting on your shaman outfit. (laughs) (laughs) To say he's trying to quell the crowd. There's pictures of him with the spear in the air. Like, I don't know. This is my thing about when. I'm not going to say they're all hillbillies because I don't know it, but I'm, I'm guaranteeing a lot of them are. And there's never any thinking it through to the end. It's, it's, it's why I love... I used to do this thing a long time ago, Fox, where they had a show, and mine was Redneck News. And it was always crimes of hillbillies where they don't think it through. Like, even if you all had gotten into the Capitol, and I don't know, Say you hung, they, some of them wanted to hang Mike Pence. Let's say you did all that. Right. And now what? Right. There's no f- follow-up. It's like the Michigan militia guys that were, we're going to get the governor. Right. We're get, and my favorite was extraditor to Wisconsin. Right. Why? Okay. Why would you do that? Right. There's just no end game. No. Um, he's in a federal prison in Oklahoma right now. He's appealing his sentence. He, he, did, he didn't make... He doesn't like me in the face of it. Aww. In retrospect, the one thing I can say is I regret not working to make sure there was far more peace on that day. You came in with a weapon. A spear is a weapon. Try to take that shit on a plane. You ain't taking it on a plane. Nope. I can't even take a golf putter. Nope. They call that a weapon. I did. I tried to take a putter. And then I tried to be funny, and it didn't work. Because the guy goes, ma'am, that's considered a weapon. I go, you've never seen me putt. Because <laughs> I putt terribly. Um... If I knew what was going to happen, he said, I would have stepped in before the barricades breach. I actually tried to calm the crowd down on more than one occasion. And there's a picture of him screaming with his horns on. Oh, my God. And he's got, like, the Viking thing tattooed, or I don't know if they're permanent. Yeah, I mean, dude, you cannot. You have a fur hat on (laughs) and horns um, he was among the first 30 in the building, according to prosecutors, was bare-chested with red, white, and blue face paint, right, Viking hat, six-foot spear. He sat in the chair in the Senate, recently vacated by the then-Vice then President Mike Pence, and refused to move, even scrawling a note to Pence, which read, it's only a matter of time, justice is coming. God, you know, I can't say I was ever in love with Mike Pence, but he, he had to be shit in his pants. And he did the right thing. Um, he was this, so this guy was arrested January 9th. He's been in custody ever since. They moved him. We talked about that because he only eat vegan things. So they accommodated that request. Um, in less than a year, more than 725 Donald Trump supporters have been arrested and charged. Uh, the list is growing day by day, but now he's whining. That's just an update that he's in jail and he's very mad because <laughs> he doesn't want to be the face. Well, no, you won wackiest outfit, dude. You won. So that's yeah. who's going to be the face of the of the little riot you're going on right. in your little terrorist moment. Um, you know, if you don't want to be recognized, go like a lot of them did in their camo with their faces covered up. And, I mean, I'm not saying you should do it at all. I think it's crazy behavior. Okay. This is the update we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Elizabeth Holmes found guilty paddles on four charges 
three they couldn't decide. Nope. But I've got some updates of what's going to probably happen to her. She's not getting the death penalty paddles. I know you would she like should. that. She should. She should. No. Here's what's crazy. One lady went into Walgreens, or man, I can't remember. I think it was a lady. And she got a blood test at Walgreens through the Theranos device, which didn't work. But it gave bullshit results. And the result that said that, that she had AIDS. And she goes, for like the next six, six months, I'm like, Whoa. Whoa, hillbilly Hannibal. Six months you walked around. What? If I walked into Walgreens and then they called and go, you have AIDS. If she didn't have one thing in a category that would make you even a high risk, right. you know, a blood transfusion, this or that. No, 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 no. You you would go to the doctor the day yes. in a panic and go, holy fuck, I went to Walgreens and they said I have AIDS. Instead, she went to Cancun. <laughs> I don't know. What's a hillbilly? I, I mean that I just made a hillbilly Hannibal up like a person. This is what, okay, so somebody, um, this was her daily schedule. This was scrawled on letterhead from a Singapore hotel. The plaza, where the cheapest room a night, this is from Elizabeth's home, uh, somehow somebody got this. Uh, cheapest room available for a sample stay next month runs the equivalent of $634 a night. This is what her schedule was. And she wrote it all down in, like, cursive handwriting. 4 a.m., rise. I've never said I rise. <laughs> it's get up. Rise. 4 a.m. Rise, rise. And thank God. Period. Most things are not logical. Period. What? She has to go to bed so she can't arrive. Uh, the shit she has experienced is not going to be that great. Well, hold on. Oh, okay. 4 a.m. She rises and thanks God and then says to herself, most things are not logical. Like what you just wrote. 4 a.m. to 4.15. Wash face, change. I don't consider washing my face an activity that I document. No. <laughs> it's like when people say, what'd you do all day? And somebody will go, well, I went and got gas. That's not, that doesn't <laughs> count. That doesn't count as an event. I mean, totally. it, unless, you know, I don't know. 4.15 to 4.45 a.m. So these are... Half, 15 minutes to wash her face and get in clothes. 4.15 to 4.45. Well, it just says change, so I don't know. Does that mean out of pajamas into workout clothes? I'm sure a workout's coming here. It always does with these people. <laughs> First thing in the morning. I'll work out, but not, not, not without coffee and stuff. 4.15 40 to 4.45. Meditate. Clear mind. Maybe you should work on that. 4.45 to 5.20, so that's 15 plus 20, that's 35 minutes, Work. she works out. 35 minutes? Yep. 5.20 to 6.20, an hour. See, she says change. Now you got to change into your, your Steve Jobs fake outfit because you had on workout clothes. Change, shower, shave, perfect. 620 to 6 no, 6:20 to 6:30 a.m. pray the lord gets 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> he gets less than what you gave washing your face to <laughs> wow i mean if you're going to bother you might as well at least give him more than i well i you wow 6:30 to 6:45 <laughs> breakfast banana and what's w h e y Way. What, oh what is that? What? Is it oatmeal? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Way. I never heard of it. Oh my God. <laughs> they <laughs> must not have it in the Midwest. <laughs> Way? Well, is it? Okay. Is, I'm going to bring you some of this. Well, I hate oatmeal, so if it's like that, don't <laughs> even bring it here. 6.45, she drives to Theranos. So she's been up for two hours and 45 minutes before she even gets to work. Those kind of people, and when I did have a real job, I wanted a punch in the face. Right. I'd been up approximately 40 minutes before I got to work, and 10 of it was spent drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> then she wrote, I marvel, or, or no, whoever 
wrote this article, said, I marvel at the specificity. I pause at the spirituality. I recognize the difficulty. I absolutely cringe at the starting time. I don't marvel at the specificity. It's hard to say. I think you're psycho. I don't marvel at it. If I saw this list on somebody's desk, I know I'd go, you need to take a vacation. You Specificity, it's harder to say than way. Way. Yeah, all I think of is this Irish guy on the Aran Islands, and he had a horse, and when, he would hit, when he'd tell it to go, he'd go, way, 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 way. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Way. I thought she meant to write wheat. Oh, Who eats wheat? No. Oh my God. I wouldn't. I don't marvel at it. I pause at the spirituality. No, she wasn't spiritual. She just did that because you're supposed to, because Oprah said so. I reckon, yeah, yeah, the difficulty, yeah. Then she wrote this, too. She had the list of, oh, this is so crazy. I do everything I say word for word. I am never a minute late. All right? I don't like people that are late. Because I usually try to be on time. But that's because I was left as a child a lot. What? Well, my parents would forget to pick up. My parents would just forget to pick us up or they'd be late. Well, I was always late. They were always late. Like, I'd be the last one to get picked up. My mama comes tearing around the corner in a paneled wood station wagon. I'm sorry I'm late. Like, fuck, you're always last. Um, Then she wrote, I show no excitement. Calm, direct, pointed, non-emotive. Boring. I speak rarely. When I do, crisp and concise. It's all in all caps. I do too. My hands are always in my pockets, which we know is dangerous because if you fall, ruh-roh, your paws are in your pockets. They teach you that in Girl Scouts, Elizabeth. My hands are always in my pockets or gesturing. I've noticed too. I have a gesture. So this was just some of her craziness. I noticed in, because I've listened to, uh, that uh, Elizabeth Vargas's podcast is great too, The Dropout. And I have to listen to the new one about, because after being found guilty, I haven't had time. I'll um, to that. Well, I have had time, but I've been doing other fun things. Um, whenever she was asked a question, like in a kiss-ass interview, say it's CNBC money, and they'd say, well, Elizabeth, you know, you seem... Uh, there seems to be a few hang-ups with your uh, product, and she would go, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's a great question. So Very you're just question. you're flattering them, but it's so contrived. You don't just keep saying that. Every question, when you know some of them, are, they're, they're very pointed, mean, not mean, but they're accurate questions that you're full of shit. Right, absolutely, yeah. And then <laughs> the voice. Oh, wow. These are the, well, I'm going to say this one. There's going to be a lot of the love Elizabeth, and then it's going to die down until her sentencing. I do not think she should have been able to walk out of there free. No. She's a flight risk. She lives on a $135 million property with this guy who's a fucking billionaire. No, 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 Liz. No, no. Mm-hmm. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Just because you haven't committed a crime before, you committed a doozy. Yep. I ain't letting you go. She'll, right. it sh- if she was smart, she should have left before this, but she's a narcissist, so she thinks... It's not going to apply to her. She'll get off. That's why she testified. Or right. well, once they hear me, you know, I'm everybody's going to. Blah, blah. I'm amazing. Also, just because people, this doesn't get talked about enough. They make it sound like she started from nothing and she was a 19 year old Stanford um, dropout. Her parents were rich. She, they gave her $100,000. My parents have never given me a dime, ever, not one dime. And when they die, I'm going to get a broken wave runner. And I'm going to have to figure out which one of us is going to pay to take it to a dump. What color? Uh, it's red. It's a See, Kawasaki. It's <laughs> um, no, and they shouldn't. Go spend your money. You know, I don't need their money. But I'm just saying, to give somebody $100,000 when they're 19 f- for no, no reason other than she has a wackadoodle idea... That's not normal. Most kids don't have that resource. So she started out already ahead of the game of normal day-to-day, as Patrick likes to call me, Sally Lunchboxes. Right. Joe Sixpack and Sally Lunchbox. I'm like, how, did, how come Joe in your example gets the beer and I get the lunchbox? How about Joe? That's what he calls average Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Sixpack and Sally Lunchbox. Um. Oh, why can't I be Sally Sixpack? All right. Sally Sixpack? I love 
Well, he that is an old timey thing. Joe six pack Sally lunchbox. But why is it sexist like that? Why can't it be Joe lunchbox and Sally six pack? No. Holmes isn't just another college first year. She's the daughter of Christian Holmes the fourth, oh, darling, a former Enron vice president, and we know how ethical that place was. Descended from the family that founded Fleischmann's Yeast. Wow. Right. They're not Bill Gates wealthy. They certainly weren't impoverished. They had plenty of um and plenty of connections. This is how she did it. So when Holmes came home after her first year of college and had an idea for a patent, there was enough money for her to forego a summer job. She didn't have to get one and hire an attorney. Who can afford a lawyer when you're 19? I have comedian friends that can't afford them now and they're 45. Then after returning to Stanford, she told the jury that she spent almost all of her time on research and basically she blew off classes that her parents were paying nearly $40,000 a year for in March 20. 2004, she managed to convince them to part with the remainder of the money they had set aside for her college, probably on the order of a hundred grand, so she could found a company which she initially called Real Time Cures. Oh, that's a bad oh, name. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like one of those books, Nature's Cure, that shit right. they used to do on late night TV. Mm -hmm. And she got her parents to invest some money. But the biggest thing was, I started working all the time. Holmes told the court. She said, I also started talking to my family, to my friends. Okay, and then whoever wrote this said, that's code for well-connected people her parents knew. Exactly. <laughs> she just went to all of her parents' friends that were rich right. and was like, you know, with her turtleneck. She was one, one was venture capitalist Timmy Draper, founder of Draper Fisher Jervison and a former neighbor of the home. But, 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 but doesn't matter. Um, so all these investors were connected, and then, you know, one leads to another. You just need to start. So her parents are the ones that, like, unleashed this little devil. Um, yeah. This is what might happen to her. This was a good article. Because I think everybody forgets, like, is she going to go? How long? Each count carries a 20-year thing. But they always say no prior conviction. However, they do judge usually on the amount of money you have stolen. And she has grifted $940 million out of people. That's a yeah. yeah it's a Almost a billion. Yeah. And it probably is a billion if you look at all the money that she spent that we're not even accounting for. Right. Um, hold on. She may get five to seven years. So um, she was found guilty on four counts, faces up to 20 years in prison, and a $3 million final, it's unlikely she will spend that much time behind bars. So they went and interviewed this guy who's uh, Justin Papperney, founder of federal prison consultancy White Collar Advice. He, this is Fortune magazine. I suspect she may get five to seven years in prison. Um, so what, what will the future look like for Holmes? Papperney, who himself served an 18-month single sentence for a single count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud and, who, fraud, and who now works with people in similar, similar situations, walked us through the process. So the sentencing, this is what's going to happen, which I thought was a pretty good uh, As a federal prisoner, she'd be eligible. You want to go to a federal prison, too, if you can. Everyone should know that if wow. you're, because they're just nicer. Nice. Yeah, they call them club feds. Huh. My dad always used to say, if you're going <laughs> to commit a crime, Go big. You don't, don't want to be in the local prison. You want to go fed a federal guy. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to change your life, become a criminal battles. <laughs> um, <Club fed. laughs> uh, as a federal prison, she would be eligible for a 15% reduction in her sentence for good behavior. But other than that, early release options in the federal system is very limited. There's no real mechanism to really aggressively advance your release date in federal prison. Okay. That doesn't mean that Holmes will be going to prison soon either. She'll likely appeal to a higher court and could remain free while that appeal is pending. I think they're going to, maybe not, maybe once they sentence her, maybe they take her. I would. Immediately. Yes. You, she can't be out on appeal. I'll Appeals can go on for years. I'll watch that with you. <sighs> if that appeal goes south, she'll be asked to turn herself in. The prison she's going to. Holmes will likely be sent to a low-security prison, often oh, see, referred to as Club Fed, because the crimes for which she convicted were convicted and were nonviolent and white-collar. 
uh, Papernie predicted she could end up in Alderson, West Virginia, where Martha Stewart served her five-month term for lying about a stock sale. <laughs> that would mean, this would mean no fences at the prison. There's no fences. What? Shut a, up. A swimming pool. Where is this? It's in West Virginia. A swimming pool, volleyball, softball, tennis, racquetball, and even roller skating. Fuck, I want to go. This sounds better than a lot of the road hotels I stay in. Another option is she, she might be at a prison in Dublin, California. The prison, which is in the Bay Area, is where Felicity Huffman spent time for her role in the college admissions scandal. What, an hour? An hour. Yeah, she went in and yeah. spent the night. They let her go. <laughs> mm. This place, this one in California has a sun deck and tennis courts. They also have craft activities like crochet, watercolor painting, and origami. Macrame. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but while the activities and amenities abound, there's no denying, in fact, Holmes will still be in prison. She will remain confined in her cell during evening hours. will have set visiting hours, and her meals will be predetermined. Well, she likes the schedule. She's already proved she might really do well here. She loves the schedule. Shit, look at her little, you know, Germanic time list of shit to do in the morning um god uh it's gonna be difficult oh well listen to this she'll remain confined in herself her meals will be determined as will her prison job if she takes a fork or even an apple from the dining hall she could end up in solitary confinement oh, let's... she's not an eater she's not gonna be stealing shit i'd be like oh my god i found a baby snickers what does she like i forgot what she eats not that oh way that's how that horse just kept going. Um, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. She's going to be around people who've been in prison for 20 years, it's especially during COVID. She could go months without visiting her family. Her celebrity status will also change the nature of her potential prison stay, as other prisoners will likely know who she is. Some of those prisoners will still, well, one day he doesn't know all this. No. All right. She can write her memoir. She can teach. She can read. And she can educate herself. Or she can sit in the room Sit in the TV room all day and complain. The choice is hers. And he tells, he says, you got to use this time to get your second act together. This lady, we don't need this lady to get a second act together. No, no we don't. People don't need to leave Walgreens thinking they have AIDS. <laughs> so crazy. Uh, this one I'll say. I'll save this one because that's enough about Elizabeth today. But yeah. All right, you're off the hook, paddles, for a while. Update. Uh, update. Yeah. We caught another dirty bird at the villages in Florida. <laughs> yeah, another resident was arrested for allegedly casting multiple ballots. Oh. I want to know. So uh huh. Yeah. A fourth resident of the village has been arrested as a part of an ongoing investigation into voter fraud. Charles Franklin Barnes, 64, was booked into the Sumter County Jail. On Tuesday night, on a charge of casting more than one ballot in an election, a third-degree felony punishable by up to five years in prison. Here's the thing. They're all registered Republicans. So they, they 99% chance they voted for Trump. Here's the thing. If you're a felon, you can't vote. So by <laughs> next time, like, if he's yeah. convicted of a felony, well, I didn't even know. Up to five years in prison. I think there was a woman in Texas. I'm going to Google it. A black lady who I think they gave seven years to for doing this. So we'll see if the same holds true for these little dirty birds. I know the villages. I had such a fun show there. I really wish they'd ask me back. And then I would like to have a side meeting with the crowd. <laughs> who here is being a dirty bird and voting multiple times? This is how they're doing it. He was released on um, $2,000 bond. Court records detailing his alleged crime were not immediately available. Voter registration showed he was not affiliated with a party when he came in 2020, 2020, but he is a registered to vote in his home state in Connecticut. So they were doing, yeah. The other residents of the um, villages have also been arrested. They have pleaded not guilty. All were registered Republicans at the time of the 2020 election voter records show. They, they describe. It's they were voting, so wherever their home state was, they were doing a mail in, mm -hmm. and then voting in Florida as well. Okay. Which I don't know. I I would think you could. I mean, I don't want to promote it, but I would think you could no, kind of get away. No. Well, I don't know. Our four voters. 
I wouldn't do it on purpose, but like one time in California, I tried to get a Missouri absentee ballot, and <laughs> they sent me like um, three. What? It was a mistake. Clearly. I didn't do it. Well, I mean, I didn't vote. This would not be the place I don't even yet. care enough to <laughs> cheat. <laughs> Those are all the updates. Um, okay. Do you have any tiny updates? Tiny updates. Uh, uh, no. Okay. You know I love the crypto. And by the way, it's really crashing at the moment. So if it all goes <laughs> to hell. <laughs> you know, I just said it's just fun. It's for fun. Don't put your life savings in there. Put whatever you wouldn't care if you went to the casino for an evening. Um but Matt Damon is in this crypto commercial. If you watch sports, basically, mainly they kept showing it during football. And I was like, first of all, Matt Damon, how much goddamn money do you need? Well, I mean, seriously. And you, you're you this respected actor. You're in all these great movies. Everybody thinks of you as like a real actor, not some like idiot. And to take this ad, but okay, fine. I don't know why Jennifer Garner has to do commercials either ones. don't get it nope. i think her career probably wasn't where it wanted to be at some point so she went commercials get you back in the thing because rob Lowe convinced everybody of that mm -hmm. once he did those ones and everybody was like oh yeah he's so cute let's call rob and then he ended up in all this all these shows but matt damon doesn't need that and the crypto commercial is so 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 ludicrously bad he's walking through and he passes like sir edmund hillary and the People, well, first it's, um, well, here, I think it ex describes it. It's explorers, adventurers, and these people, there's a lot of losers that didn't make it, and then there's the ones who did. But th this is, so you're saying, I'm a loser if I don't buy doggy coin? Yes. I know it's called Dogecoin. <laughs> I like doggy coin better. Like, it's real brave. It's brave that I took to $300 and put it in something Snoop Dogg told me to do on an app on my phone. That is not bravery. That is not comparable to people who went to the moon, uh, people who discovered uh, the the poles, the North and South Pole. It is the worst. It, it's so bad. I actually thought it was a joke. And then I went to Twitter to see if anybody else, and it wasn't just me. Thank God. I'm like, this can't be... Yeah, in the TV spot. Oh, it ran during Sunday. I didn't know. It, yeah, Sunday NFL games. The actor scrolls down a minimalist sci-fi hallway as visions of some of the world's greatest achievements appear on each side. History is filled with almost, which I also thought was kind of mean. You know, a lot of people did try. The, a lot of Viking ships sank. But that didn't mean they were shitty sailors. Maybe there was just a huge storm and a 60-foot swell came and swallowed them up. True. You can't say because they almost made it that they're a failure they you don't know what happened back then history is filled with almost he says as he stroll this would be like me trying to buy bitcoin and i didn't sign into the app right and i lost my money I'm like what is he talking about <laughs> he strolls best an intemperate explorer who sailed the oceans intrepid in explorers sailed the ocean hundreds of years ago with those who almost adventured and almost achieved, but then proved it to be too much. Maybe they didn't wuss out. Maybe bad shit happened. Yeah. Then there are others who embrace the moments and commit. So the other people didn't commit? He says as he walked past visions of people climbing Everest and the Wright brothers taking to the air their cutting edge plane. That should say plane. And in these moments of truth, these men and women, these mere mortals, just like you and me, as they peer over the edge, they calm their minds and steal their nerves with four simple words that have been whispered by the <laughs> since the beginning of time of the Romans. Fortune favors the brave. At that point, the screen shows the Crypto.com web address and logo with the implicit suggestion that buying some crypto just might give you the entree into the pantheon of world changers. I mean, come on. Like, it was so bad. I really thought, check it out. You can it's go. Yeah. yeah. He he deserves every bit of shit he, he gets for that. Totally. Speaking of which, I did watch something aside, besides football. Well, I'm still, I still love 1883. How's your fantasy team doing? My fantasy team. Well, did you do it? Yeah, I did. The last game. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> but it's a battle for fifth place. No one cares. They just COVID going around everywhere. So anyway, um, speaking of which, who has seen uh, Don't Look Up? Leonardo DiCaprio. It's the first time ever that he has spoiled his fresh record on Rotten Tomatoes after receiving mixed reviews. Really? Yeah. Oh. He was, um, he had a 10 year streak of um, fresh acting credits, including for films Once Upon a Time in Hollywood um, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh. Yeah. So this reminded me to talk about it. But yeah, I, first of all, I don't know how they afforded the cast. Um, it was Meryl Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Matt Damon, I mean, uh, not Matt Damon, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, all these people that you would know. You're like, even the ones that aren't famous famous, you'd be like, oh, I know that guy from this or that. Like, I, I don't know if they wheeled and dealed or this was favors or somebody went, well, Meryl Streep's in it. And then everybody goes, oh, okay, because sometimes they do that with comedy. And they lie that that person ain't even said yes yet. But they wheel it and they try to get everybody on board. So I'm always super um, on the lookout for the wheel. But anyway... Um, I enjoyed it, but I thought it was a little too heavy handed yeah. either at times it seemed like a Christopher Guest movie and Christopher Guest is one of the funniest people I've ever seen. I love anything Christopher Guest does, True. but they didn't go far enough to be Christopher Guest, but they didn't go serious enough to be a drama. It's like a, it tries to be a comedy kind of, but then it tries to be a drama and it's all about an asteroid hitting earth. And there's people that don't think it's fake news and people that don't think it's fake news, which is kind of like a COVID thing. Yeah. It's referring to the fake news gang versus the anti-fake news gang. A little too, there's nothing subtle about it. Put it right. that way. Right. right. So they're saying don't look up because there's a bunch of people, I'm not ruining the movie, that say the asteroid's coming and then the other group was like, just don't look up. <laughs> oh my God. Any, I would say watch it. Um, it's enjoyable. And I love Meryl Streep. And she was funny. She was great. And Jennifer Lawrence was good as a nerd. And Leo was fine. My dad didn't like the way he acted as a nerd. He thought it was terrible. <laughs> I don't know. So we're that's it. I just say try it. Why okay. not? Especially if you're stuck inside, if it's snowing or COVID or whatever. Oh, this is so great for the children. children. This is for the young people. I love it. it would be for me, but I can't go every day. Taco Bell is rolling out what's arguably the tastiest subscription service yet. Daily tacos. Oh. For $10. Now, see, I'm hungry right now. Now I want to go. I no, want a hard shell can't. beef taco right now. Uh, for $10 a month, Taco Bell customers can get one taco per day for 30 consecutive days. So you you make awesome. you're making about twenty bucks. Yeah. A taco I think is about eighty nine cents, right? Yeah. Yeah. It might be more now. Supply chain. Well, um, yeah. the national program called Taco Lovers Pass is available to purchase beginning Thursday. You have to be a member of its rewards program, no problem, and have the Taco Bell app, no problem. So That's you can go get a taco every day of the month for thirty consecutive. So they don't want you coming in and getting. Mm, all 30 ones, you have to do it. But how do they know? Oh, they probably stamp up. How do they know? Uh, on your app. Oh. Yeah, they'll keep track of your app. The Talkers Lovers Pass is only available in the Taco Bell app. They tested this program in September of 21 in Tucson, and they experienced with the price point between 5 and 10 and said in a release that it grew to reward program by 20%. See, they want you signing up for that app. That's what they really want. <laughs> The Doritos Locos Taco Supreme was the most redeemed taco. My least favorite. Yeah. I don't want Dorito taste and shell. But clearly, the children. The children, the love, children it. Love, it. love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Subscription services were more common for streaming, but restaurants have also exper experimented with them. This week, Sweet Green, I don't even know what that is. Um, Panera, which I love, has an $8.99 monthly program that you can get a free uh, hot or iced cup of coffee every day. Oh. Well, it's not free if you paid eight ninety nine. Nope. No. For the month, though, that's pretty good. That pretty good. If you're going to go into Panera every day. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So that's just a little something for the children. I want that's you to great. know it. Now. 
Um, can we talk about the Pope? First of all, out of all the Popes since I've been alive that I remember, the current Pope, Pope Frank, is by far my favorite, if I have to have a favorite. That doesn't mean he's perfect. That doesn't mean he doesn't say fucked up shit. <laughs> no, he's pretty on it. Like, and he's very progressive. He's trying to dig everybody out of the old ways and let's modern this ship up. But I mean, he's, you know, people are like, well, he isn't doing enough. He's not doing it fast enough. I mean, we're starting, you know, the last Pope, I used to do a joke in my act. I apologize to the Greek Orthodox Church for things we did in the year 1204. That's the file they're on. So Frank's got to go, how do I get him up to like, you know, gravity? Right. Um, I don't know. How about... Um, <laughs> The Middle Ages. Um, <laughs> but this is bad. Pope Francis has criticized couples who choose to have pets instead of children as selfish, arguing that their decision to forego parenthood leads to a loss of humanity and is a detriment to civilization. And then I put on Twitter, and all the termites sent back the cutest goddamn pictures. I said, yeah, but has he ever had a beagle? Hello? <laughs> Hashtag game changer. <laughs> and, uh, you know... I don't, I don't think it's selfish to choose pets instead of, but then somebody later went on to explain, well, what he was trying to say is there's a lot of kids in the world that are starving and homeless and everything else, yet some of these pets people are spending all their money on True. instead of, yeah, but you're also saying we have too many people on the planet. You know, there's a million things being said. And he was the one who said Catholics shouldn't re breed like rabbits. That was his words. Yeah. He said breed like yeah. rabbits. One. And here's the irony. He took the name Francis. He chose that as his pope name. I don't. I forget what his real name is. And then me and my dad and mom and everybody in my family, we call him Pope Frank because we're we like him. Like as far as the popes go. <coughs> Excuse me. He is Jorge Mario Bergoglio. He's Jorge. Jorge Mario. Bergoglio. Sorry. <coughs> I'm Whoa. gagging. You okay? I choked in my cracker. It was probably the pope doing it. <coughs> No, okay. it's Jorge, it's Jorge. the Lord. Man, Jorge, man. Jorge, Mario. Jorge Mario, like yeah. Super Mario. Yeah. Okay, Super great. What? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. He picked his Pope name. Right. He picked the name Francis, and the most famous Francis is Fra Saint Francis of Assisi, who was in charge of what? Animals. Oh, I don't even get it. Francis was. He made the comments Wednesday. He's he is getting old. He's like 84. Yeah. Well, the other Pope's still alive, too. How creepy is that? The mean one. Benedict. Yeah, the two Popes. Yeah. The Pope made the comments Wednesday while speaking to a general audience about St. Joseph. Jesus is earthly father. Francis was lauding Joseph's decision to bring up Jesus as amongst one of the highest forms of love when he veered into the topic of adoption and orphan children today. He then turned his focus to the couples who opt for animals instead of children. We see that people do not want to do just one or just one and no more. And many, many couples do not have children because they not, do not want to. Or they just have one, but they have two dogs, two cats. Yes, dogs and cats take the place of children. No, no, they're just different. different. They're very different. It doesn't take the place. Here's what I know. Those cats never ask me for a ride. Those cats don't need me to sign permission slips. Yeah. Those cats don't need... You know, some treats and treats. I, I have toy mice everywhere. Toy mice. There's oh fake my mice God. all over Who the. Are you? Oh my God. There's fake mice all over the property. <laughs> Come on. They love them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes, it's funny. Uh, oh. He said, um, "Don't dogs and cats don't take the place of children." Oh my God. And you know what? My brother is making up for it. He has three children, two dogs, and a cat. So see, he's making up for somebody that didn't have. The kids. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, dogs. Uh, yes, it's funny, I understand, but it's the reality. And this denial of fatherhood or motherhood diminishes us. It takes away our humanity. And in this way, civilization becomes age, and without humanity, it be loses the richness of fatherhood and motherhood. And our homeland suffers as it does not have children. Well, who is he talking about? I'm not really sure. Italy? Are they not having enough kids there? What's going on? Any Italians listening? 
Ireland, over 50% of the population is like under the age of 40. They're having tons of kids. The Pope's remarks, though surprising, come from a progressive pontiff. Yes, he is progressive. Echoing the Catholic Church teaching about the importance of couples either bearing or raising children and not and the and the potential demographic consequences of not doing so. <clears throat> he said couples who cannot biologically have their own children should consider adoption. Maybe everybody should consider, consider adoption first. Right. right? Right. But the reality is people have egos and they want to see a mini me. <laughs> That's what's going on there. How cute are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> How many children in the world are waiting for someone to take care of them? Having a child is always a risk, e- risk either by naturally or by adoption, but it is riskier not to have, not to have them. Fra- Francis has had several, uh, several animal-related dust-ups during his papacy. He made similar remarks about couple prioritizing pets in 2014. Comments he made in 2016 were interpreted as a pronouncement that animals go to heaven. <laughs> but that analysis was later called into question. The Pope, however, has been photographed with many animals over the years. He's been seen petting dogs, holding a koala bear and a tiger, holding birds, and carrying a lamb on his shoulders. Well, isn't that just the postcard of a Pope? And, well, of course, why wouldn't they go to heaven? If we can go, why can't animals? What is it, no pets allowed? Is it like a hotel? Do I have to bring a deposit? (laughs) Poor cats. Speaking of what you should do, for animals, how great is yeah. this? For animals, instead of just literally pontificating, as the Pope would want to do at times, we all know Betty White died. Oh, Very sad. So awful. Very sad. But this is great. I have two things for Betty White. On January 17th. We need a Betty White candle. And I'm going to, I do need a Betty White candle. That'll bring good luck. Yep. Um, on January 17th. Everybody's supposed to send $5 to their local um, pet shelter or whatever. I'm going to go give it to my vet guy because he takes care of some strays out back. Yeah, he's very nice. He has three cats that live inside and a dog that somebody left. Um, He's raised that and then that one's out back that he feeds. So I'm going to give it to him. But anyway, if everybody gives $5, that will be uh, Betty White's 100th birthday present. Oh, nice. Right. I I know. Okay, yep. I'm going to post it on Twitter, like, the day before. That's great. Mm. And Instagram, I guess. Um, but this story about Betty White, which was awesome. Um, hold on. Okay. As it turns out, um, okay. So, during Hurricane Katrina... The Audubon Nature Institute tweeted, We lost a conservationist animal advocate and friend. When the penguins and sea otters were evacuated to Monterey Aquarium for Hurricane Katrina, Betty White paid for the plane to relocate them. She did not ask for fanfare. fanfare. She did not ask. She did not. She just wanted to help. And she didn't even say it was her. That got leaked out. She never took credit for it. Um... I visited, I visited them in Monterey and sent a note to your office on how well they were doing, which you forwarded to the Penguin Keeper, another fan shared. He and I emailed back and forth a few times. I was so inspired by his love for animals that I went up volunteering at the Oakland Zoo for a few years. As it turns out, the Lake Placid actress didn't let slip that she had donated to the rescue efforts until much, much later. Yeah, she didn't really want people to know, which is great. Um, the Audubon Aquarium was built on high ground, the one in... Uh, where Katrina hit New Orleans, um, with concrete walls and windows. So it, more than 10,000 fish died after the aquarium's generator failed in the hurricane and the filters in the marine tank. Uh, 19, <laughs> all 19 penguins and two sea otters named Buck and Emma were among the animals that survived the storm and were able to be rescued. Caretaker Tom Dyer, who was responsible for taking care of the penguins, recalled how the animals were flown out of Baton Rouge on a private plane. Um, he said, I took care of the animals forever. And when we got to the uh, animal to get to the plane to put him on the plane, and a vet flew with them, he asked the pilot what it cost, and the guy said seventy grand. So she paid for that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He he said the next morning I wanted to thank the director who I knew slightly, and I wanted to find out who did it so I could thank the donor. She said a donor paid and did not want to be identified. Wow. That's 
Yep. So the 17th is the hashtag Betty White Challenge. Betty we'll White get that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five dollars. Okay. So that you could tell the Pope, you know what else the Vatican could do? Speaking of pets. <laughs> well, I went to the Coliseum one time in Rome, and there's wild cats, stray cats, tons of them in the Coliseum. It's like their thing, but they've made it their home. Somebody's taking care of them, but there's a lot. The Vatican is enormous. Why don't you guys adopt some kids? Huh? Huh? I don't think they're allowed to. Well, yeah, they do have a bad bad reputation with the children. How about cats? Get some cats. (laughs) Yeah, go down to the local ASPC. Hey, I never do it right. Uh, The pound is what people my age call it. Go down to the pound in Rome. And make the Vatican. The Vatican. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the BSPCA. <laughs> Instead of, you know. <laughs> Here's news. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah, I have to pour a little beer. Stop <laughs> choking. The Pope. Tell him, tell him people to go have children. God dang. Kentucky Fried Chicken is going to launch plant-based fried chicken. Yes. Well, you can't. Chicken is chicken, and plants are plants. Oh. And I'm, I'm not ordering plant-based fried chicken. I'd rather just have a salad. Right. If I'm not going to eat chicken, if I were to make that decision, okay. Is that the Beyond stuff? Yes. Uh, Beyond meat. I've never had it. Have you I tasted had, it? I've had burger. Not bad. The burger was not bad? Yeah, but it, it was free. That's oh. why I ate it. <laughs> it's got starting on Monday for a limited time. Oh. KFC restaurants will add Beyond Meat's plant-based chicken menus to its menus starting Monday for a limited time. The launch comes years after testing from Yum Brands Chain and Beyond Meat to create a meat substitute that mimics the taste and texture of whole muscle chicken like chicken breast rather than ground-up consistency of nuggets. Yeah, no. yeah, you don't need to know. This yeah. is just telling you how they... I don't know. If you're a vegan person, maybe... I'll try it. You know what? I'm going to go get it. Oh, God. Can I be there for that? I'm going to go get it. The Kentucky Fried Chicken by my house, so it's so slow. There's a mean person there, too, right? Yeah, there's a mean, one of the children. There's a mean, mean child in there. (laughs) 18 years old, 19, just mean. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hateful. There's no reason to be so hateful. Dear God. You don't need me here. Do you have me around? All right, I'm going to tell you what. Oh, yeah, he gets super mad when I ask for extra ranch. Yeah, I know. And it's 30 cents. <laughs> Great. Don't want to brag. I have it. <laughs> Ten times ass. over. I want all your ranch. You know what? Is that all it is? That's what I want to say through the window. <laughs> oh, is that all? Then I'll have all of it. But I wouldn't be a selfish <laughs> pig and not have ranch for other people. But he's just, oh, yeah, he's mean. All right. This is what happens if you get COVID in Hong Kong. And I'm only, I try to stay away from the COVID thing and the serious things um, because, you know, we hear enough of this. But this is incredible. Daryl Chan tested positive for COVID-19 when he landed in Hong Kong last month. He got a job there. Young guy, right? More than two weeks later, and despite never showing any symptoms, he remains isolated in a hospital bed with no sound, of, no sign of being allowed to leave. Oh, my God. I think that, I mean, this is funny because it's so crazy. It's not funny for Daryl, but no. I think the worst part is not knowing when I'll be able to get out. You, you're almost feeling you're back at school with a controlled wake up at bedtime <laughs> and not being able to control what you eat. He feels fine, but they won't give him. It's like a hospital. On December 19th, Chan flew to Hong Kong from London to start a new job. Chan said he was fully vaccinated with a booster shot and had tested negative several times before his flight. He was mentally prepared for quarantine, but not for not what happened next. On arrival in Hong Kong, Chan took a mandatory COVID-19 test and waited hours at the airport. His result was determined preliminarily positive. Yep. Meaning he was required to take another test. He was then moved to a cordoned off area with a makeshift bed. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was going to put you in bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you know how many times in an airport I wish someone would have escorted me to an area where there's a makeshift bed where I've yeah. got a giant layover? And I'm one time, 12 hours, I sat in Orlando in the Delta Lounge wait, waiting to get out of goddamn Orlando. 12 hours. And I had thought about just laying on the floor. I did not do it, but I was that tired. <laughs> I'm like, who does anybody care? Will anybody really care if I just use my. Yeah. Anyway. It was definitely a bit of a shell shock, having gone to done so many tests in the week leading up to my flight, and all of them came back negative. I didn't think it. I didn't ever think that I'll actually test pot as positive on arrival. Some thirteen hours after his plane landed, he was taken by ambulance. He oh feels fine. God. To a nearby hospital for further testing, he was later confirmed to have the Omicron variant, though he remained asymptomatic. Can you imagine you're in a foreign country and they shove you in an ambulance? And you feel, you're probably just hungry, yeah. right? Nope. I had a feeling of dread where you sort of go, oh, God, what's going to happen now? I definitely felt trapped. You can't just say I'm not going to get back on a flight and go somewhere. You're really just trapped there. So it was quite a scary feeling. It's not just the travelers who face indefinite hospitalization when they test positive for COVID in Hong Kong. In recent days, Hong Kong has identified a number of Omicron cases in a cluster linked to an air crew, breaking nearly three-month streak of no locally transmitted COVID. Those confirmed infected have been sent to the hospital. Meanwhile, hundreds of people, including more than 20 restaurants and staff, any positives would mean you go to the hospital. Um, and so at the, at the end of this article, oh wait, um, the minimum isolation period for anybody who tests positive, even if they're asymptomatic, is a month. They must stay in the hospital for at least 10 days, and they are not allowed to leave until they test negative twice in succession, however long that may take. But even testing negative twice doesn't mean you can go home. After that, those under, those under confinement orders are transferred to an isolation facility for 14 more days. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. He was placed in an isolation ward with two other travelers. Boy, I hope you liked them. I hope you made friends with those people who tested positive. He is confined to a room for 24 hours a day with no fresh air or outdoor exercise. Oh, he's in yeah. prison. His day follows a routine set by the hospital. At, get, get it's a look. It's not club wait, fed. Wait, wait till you do it. It's no club fed. At 8 a.m., he is woken by a jingle on the public address system oh. and an announcement reminding him to take his own vitals. Okay, that's horrifying. It's very horrifying. Yeah. He received meals provided by the hospital at fixed times. In the meantime, he spends his day connecting with family and friends on social media and watching Netflix. I'd probably say earlier mid-afternoon were the hardest times of the day. In the morning, you check your emails or social media, but by and lunch rocks around when you go, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Oh he's God. so nice, too. Like, he's, like, compliant. Right. But he's just, like, I would be not that as nice no. as Daryl. While his doctors have been professional, they're unable to tell him when he'll be discharged. It's all dependent on when I stop testing positive. And then they start the final countdown at that point. Um, he has no idea when he's going to be able to leave. <laughs> so for everybody <laughs> moaning and bitching over here about that, you know, they've cut it down to five days a month in Hong Kong. That's ridiculous. I also don't like to be... Uh, Woken up by a public address system. Well, <laughs> it is now time to take your vitals. And why do I have to take them? If I'm in a hospital, yeah. why isn't there a machine? Somebody can do it. Hmm? 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 Yeah. Troy Aikman. I really do like Troy as a football announcer. And he was a great player. Sometimes I'm not sure he's the smartest knife in the drawer, um, sharpest <laughs> knife in the drawer, but um, it don't matter, right? Who cares? He's good at football. He's taking on, he's going to, he has a beer that he thinks is going to compete with Budweiser. What? Yep. He's ready to take on big beer names such as Budweiser and Molson Coors, Coors too. Right. The whole globe, basically. Troy Aikman's going to take on the globe with the same intensity as longtime rivals, New York Giants on Sunday. Da, da, da. You get the point. Aikman 55 revealed he's going to be launching eight beer. It's spelled E8, E I G H T. Like it's a terrible. Oh, yeah, that was his number, wasn't yeah. it? That's a bad That's name. Stupid. Eight, because people are going to go, is there eight? Wait. 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 Yeah, he's, after two years of developing the product, 
You know how long Anheuser Busch been developing theirs over a hundred years. So I'm gonna say you're behind, behind, Troy. Um, Yeah, (laughs) it's it's billed as suds for the modern beer drinker. In this case, meaning it's for more organic grains, has no sugar, and features an antioxidant rich some sort of hops that are antioxidant rich. It will first debut it's at bars and restaurants in Aikman's home field of Texas. Well, good. I'm going to San Antonio and Houston. I'm going to go get one. I'm going to taste it and doing the work of the Lord. I will buy it, yes. and I will drink it. We have to. It's going to be, oh, March. It's not going to be on the retail shelves, but maybe it'll be in a restaurant. Sure, my health. Yeah. He said he's always been a beer drinker. I love beer. And then he thinks he could make it better. And he can make it more healthy, basically, is what he's saying. So, I don't know, Troy. God love you. Godspeed. You go do the work of the Lord, too. But <laughs> In 24 days? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> wow. Oh, my God. Oh, you can't edit. It's rude for those who never settle. <laughs> <laughs> I settle a lot. Um, Germany... There's a, as violence rises against Jews in Germany, one group has a radically simple scheme to fight back. It's called Meet a Jew. Wait, what? What did you just say? The Germans. Meet some. What are we going to do? Come on, Germans. Uh, the violence is rising against the Jews in Germany. So one group came up with the idea called Meet a Jew, which I, I would like to send Lewis. I want to send... <laughs> My friend Lewis, because oh he would <laughs> to watch him answer like they. So it's a bunch of non-Jewish people like in a classroom or I don't know some meeting, and then they get to ask the person questions about being a Jew. I would give everything in the world to send Lewis as our, our my ambassador, my personal. If you can rent an Irish Catholic, he would send me. If I could say me to Jew, I'm sending Lou. Um. Yeah, like they, they were at a classroom in Berlin, one by one. Two dozen eighth graders folded their sheets and coyly passed them along to the front of the class where a pair of visitors s- sitting at the desk gathered them into a pile. It's questions from the kids. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just don't understand how you have met. you. The odds are, yes, you have met Jews. You just didn't know they were Jewish. Right. We thought they were Italian. Well, I, who, <laughs> if you're just doing quick exchanges with people... I don't go to the dry cleaner and go, what religion or ethnic uh, ethnicity are you? Right. I just go, do you have my sweaters? Right. You know, I I don't know. I guess I have questions about this church. a 23-year-old who is studying biology at the college in the German capital sat back. Uh, a woman asked, um, do people treat you differently as soon as you find out that you're a Jew? Yes. One time I was at a party wearing my star David chain, but you couldn't see it because it was by my sweater. Then a boy came over and hugged me, and when he hugged me, it fell out. And she paused, and the student leaned forward, and he said, hey, are you Jewish? Uh, she said, oh, my God, at home I was taught to hate Jews, but you look so good, huh? So, of course, you're hot. He right. doesn't care. I mean, my parents said to hate you, but God damn, you're hot. <laughs> that was the biggest turnoff I've ever had in my life. That's yeah. Ridiculous. Who taught you to hate? I know. Ridiculous. It was introduced by the Central Council of Jews in Germany. So the Jews, are they're doing it. And hopefully, you know, if there is a rise in violence... Maybe they, the, I just think it's terrible that at this point we're still trying to humanize any kind of group, whether, right. yeah, whether religious or ethnicity. Um, oh, it's from Frankfurt to Munich. Yeah, the aim to humanize Jews and the rising of anti-Semitic violence in the country. Well, I wanna, I'm signing Lewis up. I'm going to call over there. <laughs> <laughs> He could do some shows too. I'm sure it'd be. I'm sure they'd like it. Um, hold on. Oh, that's a good one. I'm gonna save that one. What? Cause I, I've done a lot. I said I'd do this one though. Um, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then I'm gonna end on a um a little positive um thing. It's pretty cool. A little thing. So this is crazy. Do you believe the Bible stories are real, Paddles? Uh, most of them. I do, too. I think there's truth within them. I don't know that it... I don't think Noah really got two of every single animal. Your boat would have sank. That's fucking impossible. Did he... You're not allowed to. It's a magical cloud. 
I'm not. No, I'm a Libra. I'm yeah. practical. I know there's no magic. I love it. There's no nothing. Love that no, no. Okay. But I do think there was a flood, and there was a guy named Noah, probably. Or maybe it was like, you know, John, and they just fucked up the name. I don't know. Okay. But I think there's a basis of truth in all of it. Yeah, no it's a good book. Okay. If I went to heaven, though, and I got to review the Bible in front of St. Peter to pass my review on to the Lord, mm-hmm. my review of the Bible is too vague. Well, yeah. And then yeah. I drop it. It's yeah. caused more problems being vague. Yeah, I get it. This is Mount Karkum in Israel. Okay. This is kind of weird. The mountain kept its secret for centuries. Its air of sacred mystery, its air of sacred mystery enhanced by a remote location in the Negev, Negev, Negev Desert in southern Israel. No idea. I don't either. But one day last week, hundreds of Israeli adventurers headed up deep in the wilderness to reach Mount Karkum. Um, see my dyslexia. I'm seeing kratom. Fine. The stuff the yeah. kids, the children like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's a drug. That's a legal drug, though. It's right. legal, whatever. It's when I'm reading this, that's what I, I see. That. But anyway, it's Karkum. Okay. Mount Karkum, determined to get closer to answering a question as intriguing as it is controversial. Is this the Mount Sinai of the Bible where God is believed to have communicated with Moses? Now, oh, hang on for this. Mount Sinai's location has long been disputed by scholars, both religious and academic, and there are, more, there are a dozen more traditional contenders, most of them in the mountainous expanses of the Sinai Peninsula, across the border in Egypt. But Mount Karkum's claim has gained some popular sports because of an annual annual natural phenomenon Listen to this box. Oh that a group of archaeology and nature enthusiasts have come to witness for themselves. Okay. In 2003, a local Israeli guide in, uh, happened to be atop Karkum's vast plateau one day in late December around the time of the winter solstice when he came upon a marvel at midday with the sun low in the sky on one of the shortest days of the year. He peered across a deep ravine and spotted a strange aura of light, flickering flames, flickering like flames, emanating from a spot on a sheer rock face. That's weird. Yeah, that's really weird. It was... It was sunlight reflected at a particular angle off the sides of a cave, but the discovery soon made its way to Israeli television and was fancifully named the Burning Bush. Perhaps this, some said, was what the supernatural fire that, according to the book of Exodus, Moses saw on the holy mountain when God first spoke to him and where he would later receive the Ten Commandments. Well, I would rather it be that voice of God that's in the movie. And I'd rather it be a real burning bush. That was fantastic. fantastic. Um, The burning bush never consumed by the fire is symbolic symbolic in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and other faiths, including Baha'i. For decades before this accidental astronomical discovery, Mount Karkum was already captivating some with archaeologic... I can't say it. With hints that the site had been played... It had played an important spiritual role thousands of years ago. More than half a century ago, Emmanuel Antti, a young Italian archaeologist, found an, found an extraordinary concentration of thousands of rock carvings and rock circles as he surveyed the plateau of Mount Karkum, about 2,500 feet above sea level. Among the many rock drawings, um, but uh, they have many that are um, depicting the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Now, why would that be drawn there? Right, that's and other references from the Bible. At the base of it, named in, a he, in Hebrew for a desert, uh, there's an evidence of ancient migration trails converged here. Rituals took place in the area. Now, some people are buying it, okay. but if you go Google Mount, it's a little weird because that could be totally mistaken for the burning bush. And I don't see any other mountains that have the phenomenon that would create what would be an actual burning bush. True. Just saying. Just saying. Sure. I'm just saying. Hard. That was hard. Yeah. But if you Google it, it's interesting. Like, maybe they really did find it, you know? This doesn't, this made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> Although I'm sure it wasn't funny for this lady. A rogue wild boar charged, charged a surfer on... Um, Charged at a surfer on the water in Hawaii. Shut up. <laughs> wow. While out in the waters um, on Oahu's northwest shore, wow. he, 
he bit the board too, like a shark. No way. Uh huh. Longtime surfer Ingrid said she was charged back by a wild boar. Uh, she's a personal trainer. She was born and raised in Oahu. She's been surfing for more than thirty years. She tries to surf six new spots a year, and this spot was on her list. She was watching line up for good waves when she encountered a very la- large black boar with long tusk. Can you imagine? Swim. You're in the yes, it's in oh the oh, they can swim. Yeah, I saw something floating. I thought it was a monk seal. She said, and I thought, oh, cute, a monk seal. And then it just looked more stiff. It didn't look like a round monk. It didn't look round like a monk seal. So I don't know. I was ignoring it, and I thought maybe it was a log. Then so- suddenly its face came out of the water. I don't know how it had its head underwater the whole time. It was crazy, and I could see the, the hair off its back, and I thought it was part of a bark, part of the bark of a floating log. Oh my God. And then it... It was so close, and it came up, and I could see its teeth. Oh you should God. see the teeth on a wild boar. She said uh, the boar had the boar had an injury to its face. It swam towards swam towards her, who couldn't paddle away fast enough. So she pushed her surfboard between them. The boar bit the surfboard, leaving teeth impressions on both sides. Um, she was uh, she was able to swim to shore safely, and she last saw the boar swimming out to sea. That's how far did they swim? Well, I think he got chased there. Probably by a hunter, and he's panicked. They don't right. usually. I mean, from I don't know the ones they're in the not, Midwest don't have an ocean. Maybe they would go. They're not yeah. <laughs> On the beach, she spotted hoof prints and dog prints in the sand. She thinks there might have been hunters chasing that pig. Yeah, wild pigs are an invasive species to the Hawaiian Islands, and hunting them in Hawaii is legal with a hunting license on Oahu. Kauai, Molokai, and Maui, and other da, 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 da. the feral pigs are the defendants, descendants of the first pigs brought over by canoe during early immigrations of Polynesian voyagers to Hawaii. Perhaps 800 years ago, oh the God. pigs arrived. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, they can be super dangerous. She said she'll go back. Home. Yeah, it's it's a weird. It was. It's just crazy that you could be sitting on a surfboard and people. I mean, I surfed in Homos Beach and stuff, and I would think of sharks, and sometimes dolphins would come surf with you, which was great, but I never in my live streams thought I would see a wild boar, and I, that would scare the shit out of me because yeah. I know they can be mean. <laughs> this is just a good thing to be. This is a... Um, happiness. True happiness. Well, it's historic, too, okay. and this is a determined termite. Sometimes you have to be a determined termite. We're not holiday termites, We've, we're, but there's no reason to not try to keep that spirit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Be nice to people, yeah. especially because of COVID and everything. People are going crazy. Yeah, In a historic first, an aircraft carrier, aircraft carrier Abraham Lincoln deploys under the command of a female captain. Nice. How great is that? That's awesome. Jesus, all I think of me is trying to park like a regular ski boat. <laughs> I mean, I can do it, and I can do it pretty well. Yeah. But all I think is, how do you dock that guy? That yeah. thing? A nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is steaming towards the Western Pacific on a routine deployment for the first time ever, ever. It's doing so with a female captain in charge. That's great. Yeah. So that's a good determined termite. Uh-huh. Yeah. Captain Amy Bauernschmidt. It's <laughs> a hard one, yeah. Sure. Bauer, like the ice skate, uh, Bauer Schmidt, the commanding officer of the Lincoln, said her crew has performed exceptionally during deployment workups and that she was humbled that to be entrusted with their safety. That's, That's awesome. just a little, yeah. you know, I'm good. always extra happy sometimes in um, the airports when I see female pilots. I'm yeah. like, yeah, you go get them. Yeah, especially yeah. young ones. Young ones, yeah, yeah, we don't. You don't. Well, you do want to see people my age because you want. It's my old Malaysian airline joke. I want my pilots to be, well, right about my age, about yeah. fifty-five, because yep. you've had enough experience and you're close enough to retirement. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do something stupid like you know ditch the plane or, no. or yeah, yeah. I don't want. I don't definitely don't want people in their forties because all my friends in their forties are getting divorced or crazy. <laughs> God damn, fuck that bitch. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't want, yeah. Um, 50s, everybody's calmed down. And whatever your profession is, you probably know what you're doing by then. So that would be my choice. All right, termites. So many great things. So termites, if you want to come find me on the road, I'll be heading to um, 
Columbus first, then Cleveland, and then Pittsburgh. I really have a blast in all three cities, so I'm very excited about that. And then the week after that is San Antonio and Houston, and I love both of those. Houston, Ninfas, oh, Ninfas. it's the best best Mexican ever, the downtown one. And then um, I always go to the Alamo because I just like it, and they always have new things. What am I going to do in Cleveland? Um, I'm going to go to my favorite bar and play. There's old school bowling ski ball. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, I would just say be there for the day. Um, Columbus. Um, yeah, a termite told me to go. It's called out, uh, otherworldly dot Ohio. Something. I went on the website and I bought two tickets for that. Um and Bill Crawford from Pittsburgh will be the opener. And then Pittsburgh, I'm going to get a Brabani Brothers sandwich for sure. Nice. I mean, I oh, God, they're good. Fattening, but I won't eat the whole thing. That's my promise to myself. They put french fries on their sandwich. It's great. Uh, they put it on their yeah. Yeah. That's and awesome. usually in Pittsburgh, if I have time, I like to go to the Andy Warhol Museum because yeah. it's super cool, and they always change the thing. Right. It's never the same. Yeah. And they're super nice there. Um, they have a lot of good museums downtown. Pittsburgh. Oh, I, I know. People don't really think about it so much. And then I'll just go out drinking with Bill, probably. Um, that's a good plan. <laughs> that's a plan. Yeah. Bill's always good for a few beers. Yeah. And then um, San Antonio and Houston. Yep, that's what I'll be doing. I can't wait. These are fun gigs. Yeah. I mean, all gigs are fun, but some are more fun. Yeah. Not that hard to get to. Easy peasy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Not flying all the way across the universe. Could drive if I needed to. That, well, I wouldn't drive to San Antonio. It's too far. <laughs> anyway, that's enough. All right. Now you're just going to be good winter termites. You're winter termites. And next week, I'm going to tell you after that Virginia disaster, I downloaded the thing, but I don't have it with me right now. The seven things you should have in your car at all times, no matter what. If you live in a wintry area, uh-huh. I only had four. Oh. Yep. Yep. Lazy, bad, winter termite. I'm going to teach you how to be a good winter termite because I'm learning too. Yeah. Well, I never thought about it. I never thought about some of the stuff. I don't have an extra blanket in my car. I do. Aren't you something, Paddles? No. Canadian Paddles. <laughs> Does it say Paddles on it? It should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, termites, that's it. Ready? 